Okay, start with your horizon line. Actually, the, the point of the horizon line is to have the two points in two point perspective line up and be even with each other. It's the points that are really important, actually. Label them point A and point B. Make your horizon line really light. Okay, I will start with the sidewalk. And down about halfway between the horizon line and the bottom of the paper, I'm making a small line to show the height of what the curve is going to be. Then I'm going to draw a line, converging line, between the vanishing point and the bottom and top of this little line. Now it's okay if these converging lines are drawn darkly because they're going to be part of the picture. They're not just a guideline, they're part of the sidewalk. Do the same thing on the east side. Draw converging lines that connect the top and bottom of that little line with point B. Now sidewalks are divided into sections, so the next thing you want to do is make a vertical line to show the size of this uh, section that's going to be on the corner. All right, now next, draw a converging line between point A and the vertical line on the point B side and then point B and the vertical line on the point A side. And that'll be your first sidewalk block. Okay, now's the time to erase the horizon line. So hopefully you drew it lightly so it won't make a big mark when you do that. All right, now you wanna decide on the placement of all the lines in the sidewalk. And with perspective drawing, as in the way things look in real life, as they get farther away from you, they appear to be closer together, even though they're not. And so, first thing I'm going to do is just draw a little dot to show the placement of each one of these sidewalk lines. And there's a mathematical way that you can make it so that this is really accurate, but it's tedious. So I'm just kind of um, doing it intuitively. So I'm starting out with you know, the spaces between the dots bigger, and then I just gradually make them closer and closer together. And it'll still work. Next, you're going to draw converging lines from each one of those little dots to the vanishing point on the opposite side. And then you'll have the line that goes across the sidewalk. So here's my first one from point A to the first dot on the B side. And you have the line across the sidewalk, and then you have the rest of the converging line, which I do very lightly, that you can erase them. However, if you can remember to keep the end of the ruler on the vanishing point, and then just move it up from one, um, one dot to the next, you don't need to draw the line all the way back. It's just very, very important that the end of the ruler is on point A and it doesn't move from point A. The only part of the ruler that changes places is the ruler on the B side that's just moving up from one dot to the other. Just about done with this side. Then you do the same thing by drawing a line from each one of the marks on the A side to point B. Now the marks going across the sidewalk in perspective make it look more three-dimensional. Okay, so my first building is going to be right down here in the corner. And I draw my vertical line for the center corner of that building, the corner that's facing the viewer. And I draw it 
the size I want the building to be. And then I draw a converging line from the top of that vertical line to point A. And then I also draw a converging line from the top of that vertical line to point B. Now to decide how uh, big the building's gonna be, I'm drawing a vertical line on the point A side for the A side corner, and then on the point B side for the B side corner. And then I'm going to erase those converging lines, the ones that I drew real lightly, so that I don't have them going across any of my other buildings that I draw. Okay, some city buildings actually don't have any space between them. It's almost like they're sharing a wall. So the A side corner on this building also becomes the center corner on my next building. All I have to do is extend it up to make the height of the next building. Then I connect the top of that vertical line with point B. And I connect the top of that vertical line with point A. Now the reason I'm not connecting the bottoms is because the sidewalk already, already makes that converging line. Okay, now I make a vertical line to make the A side corner. And I make a vertical line to make the B side corner. And by doing so, I establish the size of that building. So now I'm going to erase the parts of the converging lines that I no longer need so that I don't have them marking up the next buildings that I draw. I'm going to continue on this side to make the buildings that um, actually connect with each other. So again, the A side corner ends up also being the center corner of the building behind it. And then I line up the A and B vanishing points. And I just continue like that, like I've been doing with all the other buildings. I just speeded this up so I can get it over with faster. And I uh, erase the converging lines. Now this last building, you're only gonna see the front of it because it's shorter than the building in front of it. And so you're just going to see the A side. You're not even going to see the, the B side at all. So all I have to do is draw a line down and then draw my vertical line and then get rid of my converging line. Okay, next I'll show you how to draw buildings that have a space between them, like an alley. And you start by drawing the vertical line for your center corner apart from the building in front of it and then lining up the top with the A vanishing point. When you draw your line back, jump over all those buildings. Don't draw it across them. And then you line it up with the A vanishing point in the bottom of the line, like that. And then you go over to the B side and you line the B up with the top of that line. And then you draw your vertical line for your A side corner. And that just comes down and then goes behind the other building so you don't see all of the building. And then you do that on your B side corner. And then you get rid of your converging lines. So on this side, I'm making all the buildings with uh, alleys between them. So I'm drawing them separated from each other instead of connected. So it's the same process for each one of those buildings. And you can always change and make the next one connected to the one in front of it if you wanted to. Now I'll show you how to put windows and other openings and signs on your buildings. It's really easy to do if you follow these directions. 
first of all, just make a vertical line, like parallel to that center corner, and make it as long as you want these openings to be. Make sure it's vertical, though. That's very important. So if it's parallel to the center line, then that's what you want. Okay, then take your ruler and um, on the A side of the building, you're going to draw converging lines from the line to the point A. And you're going to do that to all of these lines. So you're going to add converging lines from those uh, vertical lines to point A. If you use a like a two H pencil, that'll make it easier to erase because it'll be lighter going on. I find that for little things, it's easier to use something smaller and more easy to manage for a straight edge. So I'm using at least a file card here. So the next thing to do is draw the vertical line for the other side of the window and fit it right inside the converging lines. And then draw over the converging line where the top and bottom of the window will be, darkening it. And make sure that it follows the converging line and do that with both windows. And then you go to the next windows. And you go ahead and you draw your vertical lines for your the first side of the window. And then you move it over how wide you decided you want the window to be. And then after you make both lines, you use your straight edge to draw a straight line along the top and bottom using the converging line. Now this will be two rows of windows the same size, and so the process is going to be the same for each one of the windows. And so rather than do this in actual time and make it oh, boring to have to watch, I decided to speed it up. And then I'm going to draw all the windows in into the converging lines. You want to make sure that your vertical lines are exactly vertical, just like your um, center corner, because it's really easy, that's like a common mistake people make, to make these um, lines slanted, these vertical lines that are supposed to be vertical lines, to make them slanted, and then that really messes up the looks of their building, because then it just it doesn't look right. <laughs> But using this little uh, file card instead of a ruler just makes it easier for things like this. So I strongly recommend it. So I've decided to turn this into a parking garage, and so I'm going to need some doors that are wide enough for cars to pull into. And I've already got the converging line to show me where the top of the doors should be. I just have to decide on the width of the doors. And after I've done that, then I make a vertical line right inside the converging lines for the other side of the door. And then I just flip my card around and lay it on top of the converging line. And I can draw a line for the top of the door. Then I have to decide on the space between the doors and draw my first line, my first side of the door. And you can do it in any order. Um, I decided to do the top of the door first using the converging line and then make the second vertical line for the other side of the door. Remember when you're drawing windows and doors in perspective, especially if they're all the same size, they'll recede into the distance. They'll get smaller and smaller, just like the side of the building gets smaller and smaller, and the spaces between them will get smaller. And that's something that you have to just kind of uh, intuitively figure out how you want that to look. All right, then the next thing is to draw some windows in the B side of the building. And so I'm just following the same process. 
I want them to be about the same size as the ones on the A side. So I'm being very careful to look at the size and placement of my uh, vertical lines so that they are about the same size and placement as the ones on the A side. All right, now you know the next thing to do. Make a light converging line to point B because now we're in the B side of the building. And using a, a 2H pencil or a 4H pencil will actually help you because you'll be able to erase the line a lot better the parts of it you decide you don't need. Not that you can't use the other pencil that you were using. You can. It's just harder to draw lightly with it. All right. Now I have to decide how wide I want these. And I have to draw another line within the converging lines parallel. And then lay my card along the converging lines to draw the top and bottom in correct perspective. Now this is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to draw a regular size window on each side and in the middle I'll have like a something the size of a picture window although it wouldn't be a picture window in a parking garage. So I'm drawing the ones on each side first. And then I can decide like how much space I want the bigger window in the center to take up. So right the side of it. Actually there's two of them. They're the same size as the or same height as the regular windows, but not the same length. And I draw my other side. That's how wide these are going to be. And I use my card to make the top and bottom along the converging line. This makes it really easy if you do it this way. It's a lot less tedious, too. You can do this for like any building that has lots of windows. All right, now this building also needs a big sign on the side of it that says parking. So I'm making the top and the bottom of the sign, and since it's on the B side of the building, I'm lining the top and bottom up with the B vanishing point. And then I'm going to make a little dot right in the center between the two lines, and very, very lightly draw another line back, another converging line back. Okay, so there's a very light center line in there. It's a good idea to figure out which is the center letter in the word that you want to put. K is the center letter in parking. I start with that, put it in the middle, and then I start drawing on the other letters. And if they have a cross piece like an A or maybe an E, I make sure that that cross piece follows the converging line that's in the middle because those have to be in perspective too, if you want it to look right. So now I have a great big parking sign for my parking garage. All right, now I'll show you how to make these look more three-dimensional. Okay, watch where I'm putting the ruler. And then I'm drawing a short line along the ruler. The ruler's lined up with a B vanishing point. It's only as deep as I want that like door frame to go. And I'm just going to do all three of them the same way. So it'll save me time if I do each door. You need to make sure that that end of the ruler on the left hand on the right hand side stays on point B. Okay. Now the next thing is to draw a vertical line intersecting those uh, converging lines that you just drew like that. So it's not going to go all the way down to the 
bottom of the door. It's only going to come down to that line. All right, now watch where I'm lining up the ruler. I'm lining it up with the A vanishing point, and I'm lining it up with the corner that's formed by those two lines coming together, and that will give more of a three-dimensional look to those openings. So to make uh, this wall into brick, the first thing I'm doing is making little dots along the center line. And I'm spacing them about how big I want the space to be or how tall each brick is going to be. And then I lay my ruler on the A vanishing point. It's on the A side of the building. And I go from one line to the next. I carefully move my ruler down on the left right hand side but on the left hand side I'm making sure to hold that ruler firmly so that it's lined up with point A and sometimes people have a hard time keeping it lined up if they don't draw the line all the way back but if you learn how to do this in perspective without having to draw that line all the way back to the vanishing point you'll save yourself a lot of time in the long run when you're drawing buildings like this. Now for some buildings you could leave it that way, but for this one I think it needs bricks. So now my ruler is parallel to the center line and I'm making just a little vertical line on every other space. So right now it's like the odd number spaces, if I were to number them, like one, three, five, seven, nine. Then I slide my ruler over and I use it to make little vertical lines in the two, four, six spaces. I just pay attention all the time to how, how big I want these uh, bricks or blocks to be. All right, since this is all very repetitive, I'm just going to speed up the last bit so you can see it. You can draw arched windows too in perspective. And sometimes it's easier if you just move your straight edge out of the way so you can see what you're doing. As long as you take your time, you can draw the vertical lines for the window edges to, to establish the size and placement without having that card in the way. You just have to freehand it. Not everybody can do that, but a lot of times it just takes practice. All right, now the next part you've seen before, you draw your converging lines. All right, now the idea is to just uh, draw your window in between two converging lines, and when you get to the top, instead of making it a straight line, just make it an arch. It takes a little bit of practice to get it to where it looks like it's in perspective, but as long as you keep the whole thing within the converging lines, and the top of it touching the converging lines, that'll help you master this. All right, this one I'm also going to uh, make windows at the ends that are the same size and then make other windows in the middle. So basically, you know, just draw your vertical line, make your arch come down the other side. All right, now this one, see I'm making this arch and I'm making it follow the converging line. I'm making the bottom of it. And for the windows in the middle here, I'll make two regular size windows, but they're joined. that. And now I'll do the same thing for the door. Make it look like a giant mouse hole. Just fit it right under the converging line. Make sure it's touching the converging line. And erase 
some of the converging lines that you don't need anymore. Then I'm just going to draw another line like this, and that really gives the illusion of there being an interior. And for this one, I will line up the right hand side with the A vanishing point. And I will draw the line along the ruler, but not all the way back. And then make another curved line. I think it's a lot of fun actually to do it this way. I am um, just making converging lines from point A on the point A side of the buildings and I'm making a lot of them and I'm making them very, very, very light, you know, so that the, actually the less they show up, the better. <laughs> because then um, you don't have to erase nearly as much. Now I've got the convergent lines drawn and I'm just going to just start drawing my windows and my doors and my other things and just uh, fitting them into the converging lines. All I have to do is make sure that my sides are vertical and that my tops and bottoms follow the converging lines. And it's really, it's really fun actually to do it that way because you can just draw so many things and it's not tedious at all. It would be fine to just leave the city the way it was with just the sidewalk and the buildings, but I wanted to use the opportunity to show you how to draw stair steps in two-point perspective. So I start with a vertical line, and then I mark out where I want the steps to be as far as their height on the line so that I have something to line them up with. Now I'm drawing converging lines from point A and going all the way through each one of these little marks and coming out on the other side because it's actually the lines on the other side that I'm going to be using. I'm making these lines very light because a lot of them will get erased. All right, now I draw a vertical line and I follow the converging line to make the top of the step. Second step, I draw the top on the converging line, draw a vertical line for the front, draw the top on the converging line, draw a vertical line for the front. And you go on down for all the steps that you're going to be making. And then you want to get rid of all these extra lines because they're just going to be in the way. Okay, now you can kind of imagine how the top of the step will look. And if you can, it'll help you visualize what you're doing now. But I'm drawing a line that's connected to the B vanishing point, and I'm drawing the line on the inside corners and on the outside corners of the steps. I'm doing it all the way down. But I'm making sure that when I draw it that my ruler is on point B and not deviating from it. All right, so I'll start with a vertical line for the other side of the step. Then I have to use my ruler 
to draw a converging line from that vertical line to an A. Okay, so then for the bottom of this step, use point A to draw and then draw a vertical line. And now I'm just going to go over all these lines because I drew them really lightly to start with, but now I want them to show up. You can make stair steps that are a lot longer, or you could do the same thing on the A side. So your steps would be going in the opposite direction. But this will give you a good idea of how to draw steps in two-point perspective. And I want to make sure I've got the bottom of the steps. Okay, but I drew all the way back because I've got another idea. So now I'm lining B up with the actual bottom of that original first vertical line. And so actually I've got the whole city, the whole city block anyway, sitting up on top of a platform and then you have to walk down steps to get off of it. And I can even make it look more three-dimensional by making vertical lines that are at right angles with uh, the sidewalk lines I'm going all the way down. I could have made the steps actually go the whole length of that sidewalk if I wanted to. And if you are doing a drawing of your own, you could consider doing that too. The whole idea isn't for you to make yours look exactly like mine. Now I'll draw a sidewalk going from the bottom of the steps. So I line up the bottom corner of the step with A and draw a line out along that ruler. And then I just leave the ruler on A and go to the next corner of the step and draw a line out again. And there you have a sidewalk.